आइए अब आपको लेकर चलते हैं एक नए सत्र की ओर जिसमें अश्विन सांगी से बात कर रहे हैं डॉक्टर नील कमल कपूर हेलो एंड वेलकम टू विश्व रंग द टेगोर इंटरनेशनल लिटरेचर एंड आर्ट फेस्टिवल 2020 ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय द रविन्द्रनाथ टेगोर यूनिवर्सिटी भोपाल माय नेम इज सिद्धार्थ चतुर्वेदी एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस सेशन एज द को डायरेक्टर ऑफ द विश्व रंग फेस्टिवल विश्व रंग इज वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट वर्चुअल सेलिब्रेशन ऑफ इंडियन लिटरेचर आर्ट्स कल्चर सिनेमा एंड म्यूजिक एट द ग्लोबल स्टेज द फेस्टिवल गोज truly global this year with 16 countries joining hands in celebrating the <coughs> essence of indian culture across the globe today we are in conversation with one of my favorite authors an author who ranks among india's highest selling english fiction authors today he has written several best sellers including the rosabel line chanakya's chant the krishna key the sialkot saga keepers of the kal chakra and two new york times best selling global crime thrillers with james patterson he is included by forbes india in their celebrity 100 list and he is also a winner of the crossword popular choice award the very popular and the master of the mythological thriller genre author ashwin sanghi is with us today welcome to vishwaram ashwin ji thank you siddharth ji aur mujhe ab dar lag raha hai because of those lovely words of introduction Now I'm really feeling that you've set the expectation bar so high that it's going to be difficult to live up to that. No, you truly, truly deserve all of them, sir. Uh, and it's a pleasure to welcome you at Vishwarang. Um, and uh, moreover, today uh, to moderate the session, we have with us Dr. Neil Kamal Kapoor, who is currently professor and head of the Department of Pathology and Lab Medicine at AIMS Bhopal. But more importantly, in today's session's context. she is also a prolific writer and has written many books short stories articles and columns in both hindi and english in several national level magazines and publications her story shining star found a place in the top 10 of recently concluded times group write india competition so welcome to our session dr neel kamal kapoor namaskar so uh, i meet you neel kamal ji and 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 thank you for moderating this session i am truly honored Uh, the pleasure is all mine sir so with this i leave the stage uh, this virtual stage now between ashwin sanghi ji and dr neel kamal kapoor ji so over to you dr neel kamal kapoor for running the session from here on uh, thank you very much siddharth and uh, ashwin ji uh, i have read your books and i never ever thought that i would have uh, Uh, the opportunity of interacting with you for one full hour so i must thank the vishwarang organizers as well and uh, uh, i know you do not need uh, any introduction to your readers uh, nationally and internationally but still uh, i would compliment you on the fact that uh, books of yours have actually motivated the younger generation to you know come back to uh, literary pursuits uh, but i think for their benefit i would again uh, like to ask you a little bit about your initial phase uh, of uh, writing maybe coming into writing and you know the and some significant things which would be useful for the younger generation uh, for their motivation you you know neel kamal ji you yourself are a writer and uh, uh so you know what it takes to actually write uh and a lot of people ask me what does it take to be a writer i said well the first step is to start writing uh and because there are a lot of people uh, who think about writing but they don't actually uh, take that first step to start writing uh in my case uh, my background and upbringing was an entirely business oriented background uh my my family is a business family and uh, uh my mother is a, a banya from kanpur uh, oh, wow. and my father is uh, is a marwadi from jodhpur so in that sense uh, that was a deadly combination it was taken for granted ki ye gaddi pe baithega aur kaam pe lagega I mean that that was pretty much the approach. कि भाई एक बार पढ़ाई हो गई, लिखाई हो गई, MBA कर लिया और उसके बाद काम पे लगो. And uh, uh, during those growing up years, uh, the 
common factor that was running through my growing up years was actually my nana ji who lived in kanpur he was not my real nana ji he was actually my maternal grand uncle uh, mere nana ji ke jo bade bhai the uh, he lived in kanpur and he was very fond of reading so uh, <clears throat> he had this approach of sending me a book every week uh, to read and he would say beta dekho tum to baniye family ke ho to tum lakshmi ji ki to pooja karoge hi karoge par uh, ek cheez main tumhe bata deta hu ki bina saraswati ke लक्ष्मी जी भी खुश नहीं होती हैं बिकॉज लक्ष्मी जी हर वक्त क्यूरियस होती हैं कि सरस्वती कहाँ गई तो अगर तुमको लक्ष्मी की भी पूछ पीछे जिसे कहते हैं अगर तुम्हें लक्ष्मी जी की पीछे के पीछे पढ़ना है तो सरस्वती के पह, पह, पहले पीछे दौड़ो तो ऑटोमेटिकली तुमको लक्ष्मी जी खुद ब खुद आ जाएंगी एंड देन ही यूज टू से कि देखो हिंदू अपनी जो हिंदू माइथोलॉजी है उसमें एक ही ऐसे डेट ही हैं एक ही हमारे ऐसे भगवान हैं जो लक्ष्मी और सरस्वती के बीच में विराजमान हैं और वो हैं गणेश जी जब लक्ष्मी और सरस्वती साथ बैठती हैं तो गणेश जी उभर के सामने आ जाते हैं उन दोनों के बीच में सो आई लाइक टू जोक दैट प्रोबेबली माय फिजिकल फिगर इज अ लॉट लाइक गणेश जी बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट माई लाइफ हैज बीन डिवोटेड टू ट्राइंग टू कीप दीज टू देवी जीज ऑन इधर साइड बट uh growing up uh, nana ji sent me almost about 300 books and uh, he would uh, require me in a week or 10 days to send him a chitthi in which i would tell him what i liked what i didn't like what i read what i didn't read uh and somewhere along the way i think and you can probably understand this being a medical researcher yourself my brain was getting hardwired the circuitry of my brain was getting changed uh so uh i went for my mba my background is not uh in uh, literary pursuits it was completely in business and finance uh i went to america finished my mba i came back i started looking into the family business and then for the next 15 years it was an uneventful life but then one fine day i suddenly realized that this is not what i want to be doing uh and that is when the very first book the rosapal line started taking shape and i was so worried at that time that how my family would respond to it because uh, you know they had uh, it, it in in india we still have this cultural baggage ki you know i mean either you are an engineer you are a doctor you are a ca you are a businessman you do something which can earn you a living you yes. don't become a writer overnight uh and so for the for the first book i didn't even tell anyone that i was writing that book only my wife knew that i was writing the book when the book was published it was published under a pseudonym because i didn't want my family to know so uh it was only after i got success with that first book that i was willing to come out into the open uh so i think if there is a writer in you if there is a storyteller in you then you must do whatever it takes in order to make that happen Uh, and i think uh, that at, is the at, biggest at, take away at this point i'd like to you know uh, move a little away from uh, you per se but i would like your uh, thoughts and opinion about the fact that uh, a little bit we know and as our uh, so, you know society also says that our schools and our education system they actually try to kill creativity they regiment children and like you talked about hard wiring you know hmm. the cerebrum at that uh, that uh, kacha umar uh, and and then uh, as i was going through your um, as, um, uh, you know bio sketch i realized that you had a classical you know convent school education in mumbai and, but you landed up in yale also later yes. on and uh, american education system is actually it allows you to you know in fact it uh, it uh, awards you uh, if you are creative in whatever you are doing it's not about Absolutely. writing so Absolutely. i would love to hear your you know you've gone through both the systems and you then stuck to your creativity because of your mother your nana ji uh, so i would love to hear your opinion and thoughts about uh, our education system as well little little bit you know uh, neel kamal ji i wrote uh, uh, i have also written a few books in uh, the series known as 13 steps which are yes. non fiction yes. books mm-hmm. and one of the first books in that was 13 steps to bloody good luck where yes. i have described a little bit about my life and i have also talked about 
the fact that to a very great extent, our present education system is uh, wanting to turn out people almost in a cookie cutter fashion. Yes. Every cookie should be the same. It should be the same size, the same depth, the same width, the same texture, uh, because it's almost like a manufacturing operation. Uh, I think one of the great things that happened to me when I went to the US and I was a student uh, uh, doing my MBA in finance was that uh, I had a pretty bad scores in most of my MBA subjects. But the reason I had bad scores was that uh, Yale was one of those places which had 18 libraries on campus. Um, it had the Yale Drama School where some of the greatest people from the world of theater and literature would come and speak. Uh, it had some of the greatest uh, uh, classrooms that you could uh, go to and you could simply audit those classes without expecting to get any grades, uh, which meant that you could, you could attend lectures uh, in various other departments which were not connected to your core curriculum at all. Uh, you could decide that you wanted to take up ballroom dancing and you could still do that. So I think the, the great thing about an education system is not necessarily to be able to teach you something, but to inculcate in you the quest to learn. If I really think about the years that I was growing up as a school child, my real education did not come from school. It came from Nanaji. Nanaji. Because Nanaji yes. was sending me books which were way ahead of my time. And they were books which, are, uh, which a standard curriculum would not have given me. Uh, so for example, a book like, let's say, Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahans Yoganand, which remains one of my all-time favorite books even today, having read it 12, 15 times. Oh. Uh, that, that book, I think the first time I attempted to read it, I must have been probably 14 or 15. Uh, uh, if I think about the classics that Nanaji sent me, I mean, whether it was uh, you know, War and Peace or whether it, uh, whether it was some of the greatest works by Charles Dickens, uh, or, for example, even his exposure at an early age to me for mythology. Like, for example, I remember uh, reading Raja Gopal Chari's Mahabharat retold probably when I was not even in my teens. Uh, so it was a cross section of books that came to me. And that was where the real education was. Uh, and it taught me, it, it, it made me inquisitive. It made me understand yes. that I don't know everything and that uh, it's uh, even when I die, I will not know everything. And probably the way I want to live my life is that every day I want to be able to. You know, <laughs> I, I think that is really what true education is knowing that you don't know. Just, uh, just again, a small uh, question which uh, rose in my mind that you said you have revisited uh, biography of the of a yogi so many times any other book uh, which you keep on revisiting which has more connection with what you are writing or what you will write but uh, there are so many out of that collection so many i mean you take for example there is a i mean and and my reading is so diverse and has always been so diverse uh, you take a book like for example a book by fritjof capra called the tao of physics which talks about actually the overlap between quantum theory and spirituality. And uh, I mean, that was a book that inspired me to actually write the Keepers of the Kal Chakra. Yes. Uh, or for example, uh, a book like, let's say for example, um, uh, a book like uh, Holger Kirsten's Jesus Lived in India. Uh, it's the first book that eventually brought me closer to the idea that for those times, Jesus was the equivalent of a yogi. And it inspired me to write the Rosabal line. To yeah. talk about the possible connections between between Christ and India, uh, or the fact that he had borrowed so heavily from Buddhist philosophy. You read the Sermon on the Mount, and it's 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 almost as if it has been taken out of Buddhist thinking entirely. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, I think there have been a lot of books like that, and of course, even in the world of fiction. I mean, today you take someone like Salman Rushdie's Midnight's Children. It's a book which probably I must have read at least three, four times because it's a book which produces insane amounts of jealousy in me because I know that I will never be able to write like that. <laughs> but at the same time, you always look at it in amazement 
and you wonder that how have how have these sentences been framed how has this tapestry been woven uh, uh there there are uh, there are uh, i would say uh, probably books which uh, have opened up different vistas like for example dominic lapierre's freedom at midnight i mean yes. that that was a that was a book which sort of told me hey you know do, i don't even realize that i'm reading history a uh, history can be told as a wonderful story why do we make history so boring uh you know so so there are many many books like that which i have gone back to more than once yes very understandable and and uh, uh, we you me people like us we hope that our youngsters also uh, you know uh, keep doing this keep uh, going back to books because it really has a plethora of knowledge and depth and wisdom Uh, Neil Tobalji, which... the problem is that not only do I think readers like us probably we are dwindling, but also the problem is that mentors like my Nana Ji are dwindling. If I really think about it, the amount of time that that old man gave to a youngster, and wanting not only to send him that book every week, but expecting that I will not send you the next one till the time you will not send me back a letter. and you it will be almost the equivalent of a book review where you will tell me what you have read now that sort of time and attention i don't know whether i would be capable of giving to a, to a youngster in my own life no my perhaps my son is all of 16 and all that he does is sit in front of his video games i've tried him so, tried so many times to tell him that listen meri thodi si to izzat rakh lo thodi si to laaj rakh lo i am a writer but the the point is i think times have changed you know and the other thing that i also realized neel kamal ji is that to a very great extent uh, in uh, in this changing world the hero of uh, the hero in this entire uh, construct is actually the story uh, mm-hmm. so to a very great extent whether it is the written word in the form of a novel or whether it is a novella or whether it is an illustrated novel or whether it is a short story or a poem or a video game or a movie or a web series they are all ultimately stories so the oh, yes. method of consumption of stories is undergoing a revolution and and i would also uh, like to uh, you know highlight uh, for you ke aap jo uh, mythology spirituality wagaira ko uh, thriller ke rap mein lekar ke aaye hain Uh, आपके नाना जी ने एक अलग तरह से वो काम किया यूथ के लिए और आप आज के कंटेम्प्रेरी तरीके से वो ही काम कर रहे हैं अगर आपकी बुक बेस्ट सेलर है और उसको बहुत सारे लोग पढ़ रहे हैं जिसमें से एक बड़ा कंपोनेंट यूथ का है तो यू आर डूइंग द सेम थिंग एंड आई कॉम्प्लीमेंट यू ऑन दिस अप्रोचिंग but i have realized that if i want to reach out to today's readership then i cannot simply narrate the myths or narrate philosophy or talk about historical events and present it to them in the same old fashion it needs to be repackaged in order yes. to meet their sensibilities and Absolutely. that is pretty much what i have attempted to do yes uh, but it's extremely successful <laughs> and also uh, in this that same stream of thought uh, i uh, as you have have a international leadership presence as well so then uh, do you think that as the time progresses the indian literature which is quite under the wraps in our areas only would would you know create a big splash or some splash on the international scene also Oh uh, well, if you really think about it, uh, you know the splash on the international scene has happened way ahead of. Uh, in fact, in some ways, the curve, the in, the literary curve in India has followed actually the literary curve in the West, in the sense that, uh, for the longest time, a publisher uh, in our country wanted award-winning writers, and a large chunk of award-winning writers came from India. so whether it was the arundhati roys of the world or whether it was the salman rushdies of the world or whether it was the anita desais of the world all of them basically a large chunk of them were available through the indian subcontinent or the indian diaspora uh having said that what was not happening in india was really in terms of finding 
the next commercial success and i think that fundamentally underwent a, uh, underwent a change with chetan bhagat sir i will on the scene mm-hmm. where uh, it was possible for uh, i mean don't get me wrong i think uh, indian writing uh, had all the makings of best seller material but till then no one thought that indian writers in english could actually sell those sort of numbers um, yes. so you it's not as if you didn't have surendra mohan pathak selling in the lakhs yes. uh, 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 his hindi fiction but that that model did not work for english fiction yes uh, so that is what has changed probably in the last 15 odd years uh, with the arrival of people like uh, chetan Bhag- bhagat and then um, amish tripathi and uh, several others uh, which has become a growing bandwagon as such Mm-hmm. now the question is that for the longest time in india we have had commercial best sellers from the west becoming best sellers in india so for example we had the john grishams and the dan browns and the jeffrey archers and the sydney sheldons all getting accepted in india now the question question that you are asking me is this that will commercial best sellers in india get accepted in the west because, and i think uh, that uh, 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 sorry to interrupt you because there are there is a stream of thought of people who say that the authors you named who are always been there on the international scene they are more of describers of social anthropology social anthropology so the it's the curiosity value and not the story which you know uh, absolutely so, so to a very great extent till now what the west has accepted from india is basically writers of literary fiction so whereas commercial fiction writers are accepted in india but have still not been accepted in uh, in mainstream terms by the west uh, whereas we have opened up our doors to western authors for the longest time because for the longest time the publishing industry was more interested in promoting western authors that yes. they could sell in india uh, uh, that uh, so in in some ways it isn't the publishing industry which opened the doors for indian authors uh, who were commercial writers it was commercial writers who broke down those doors uh, and i i mean so so uh, uh, with the arrival of chetan suddenly a large number of publishers began to realize that we have no way of being able to hold this this is a tide and that moment has come so it has taken us the last 10 or 15 years to get here there used to be a time when if you looked at a best seller rack in a bookstore or if you looked at a best seller list uh, in the india today uh, it was dominated by uh, western authors yes absolutely. today uh, most best seller lists are dominated by indian authors mm-hmm. so we never thought that that situation would come 15 years ago but it has come so i don't believe that there should be a reason Uh, preventing indian authors from being able to also attain a modicum of success in the west uh, probably maybe in another 10 to 15 years uh, and that process has already started uh, because if you see someone like for example an ashok banker uh, who was pri- who primarily had an indian audience today now he is doing pretty well for himself uh, in in the us similarly if you take for example uh, someone like me Uh, who uh, was an unknown commodity in the west my two novels along with james patterson both became new york times best sellers so i think uh, the opportunities are there but it's going to take a little bit of time the way it took time for indian authors to even get accepted in india right and since you've uh, taken the name of uh, mr james patterson and you have other uh, co-authors also some uh, indian oh. uh, writers as well oh. so it would be interesting to hear uh, the process of this uh, co-writing uh, business because authors per se are considered to be, be very uh, you know lonely individualistic people and uh, so how does this collaboration what's the process how do you do it uh, well uh, let me tell you it works in, in i the way i see it is ki uh, You, let's take the world of indian classical music you have some great performers who uh, who sing beautiful uh, solo i mean uh, for example i mean when i was writing chanakya's chant uh, i would uh, put on the haveli sangeet of uh, uh, pandit jasraj in the morning 
uh, while I would be writing at five o'clock and five thirty, and it evoked feelings of what would have what would have been ancient Magad, ancient Patliputra, and you know, uh, 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 tried to re-evoke that sentiment, that feeling of that time. Uh, but in, uh, equally, uh, those very greats can also perform beautifully as Jugal Bandhis. Uh, but the, the method of producing that, that melody becomes slightly different because in a Jugal Bandhi, you have to watch each other's notes uh, and you have to watch each other's rhythm. Uh, so you not only need to take care of yourself, but you also need to be watching out for your partner. Right. And that is where co-writing becomes a bit of a uh, challenge because uh, so it, uh, the, the process of co-writing works differently for different people. But in the case of James Patterson and myself, uh, we had already decided that uh, we would, uh, one of the authors would work on a story outline. And when you are writing in partnership, then your story outline has to be very, very detailed because uh, you have to know every twist and turn in the story before you start writing the very first word. Uh, the person who writes the outline would not be the person who writes the first draft of the novel. And the writer of the first draft would not be the person who develops the second draft of the novel. So the idea being that the story outline moves from the first author to the second author in the form of a first draft. And then the first draft moves back to the first author in terms of the second draft. The idea being that both the voices can be combined, uh, but each one knows exactly what they are meant to be doing. Uh, in the case of the writings that I have done in, in India itself on the 13 step series, again, yes. out there I've typically worked along with people who have a vertical domain knowledge in a certain specific area like let's say, for example, wealth management or health or what have you, uh, then I expect my co-writer to develop the draft in terms of the, in terms of the outline, uh, bringing all their original research into mm. that original outline. And then after that, they develop the first draft of the manuscript, but that is when Ashwin Sanghi comes into the picture because not every researcher or not every expert in a vertical domain tends to be a good storyteller. And yes. ultimately at the end of the day, all books are about stories. So- Oh yes, uh, of course. Uh, you know, at the end, uh, even whether it, people think mistakenly that that only applies to fiction, but actually even nonfiction, uh, ultimately at the end of the day, either uh, you can have a reader who makes a huge effort to turn from page seven to page eight, or you can have a reader who reaches the end of the book and doesn't realize how the pages got turned. So I think that is really the crux of it, that can you make it very, very easy reading. And that is where I bring in my value. That is so such a absolutely in a way, very simply stated, but a very profound thought that that's, that is what uh, you or maybe so many other writers are trying to uh, achieve and do. And you have been highly successful in that. Uh, it was uh, Hawthorne who said that easy reading is damn hard writing. Yes, uh, exactly. So, uh, say, hai, karna padta hai, in order to be able to make the words flow very easily and to leave you with enough of an anticipation at the end of a page in order to incentivize you to turn the page. Uh, yes. And I think uh, that is... Uh, ultimately what we are wanting, that it should be almost like a hot knife going through butter. Right. And as you said, you also elaborated on it. So it's very, very, uh, it gets underlined all the time. Stories are all of us. But to keep it outside, to keep it in front of everyone, to keep it in its perseverance, hard work, that is also needed. So this is the and you would know Neil Kamalji because of the fact that you have written so many articles and have written books yourself, uh, that ultimately it's quite easy to write, but it's not very easy to do storytelling. Uh, yes. And uh, I have always believed that there are, there are two separate compartments. I mean, uh, frankly, all the editors that I have worked with uh, over my journey as a writer, are all very good writers. They could not become great editors without being great writers. What they, right. what they usually lack is the ability to tell a good story. 
and that is the reason why even those very good writers become editors uh, because of the fact that they don't necessarily have that. Uh, I mean, for example, for me, I like to find connections between the world of philosophy and history or the world of history and mythology or the world of mythology and science. Uh, I don't have compartments in my head. Uh, I like to find ki, uh, can I pour something from this compartment into that compartment? Iska mishran kaise hoga? So uh, that is, I think, to a very great extent, that lateral thinking, uh, which uh, to a certain extent enables my stories to flow. Uh, and most of my editors tell me this, that, listen, I mean, how did you, how did you connect this with this, you know? You uh, <laughs> mixture, you don't make a very swadish mixture. Today, we are talking about swadish, so the flavor of the season is COVID. Yes. So, and uh, the COVID, uh, I am a medical doctor, so it affects me in a different way, but overall it has affected the whole world uh, in uh, so many ways that nobody could have imagined. We had forgotten that the times and eras of uh, huge epidemics and pandemics. Uh, can you, do you see any uh, change it'll bring about on the literary scene or literature per se? Well, I would uh, say that, uh, first of all, I must tell you that my creative output as a writer during this time has been far higher than it usually is. So uh, the, you know, because after all, if you are, uh, if you have more time to be sitting at home, uh, then automatically I would imagine that your imagine that you, your own imagination and creative instincts should be getting multiplied. So yes, juices uh, are flowing better. Ju juices are flowing better. So yes. I would imagine that probably you will see far more literary output in the coming years because of the fact that uh, there was this period, this lull of about one year almost. So that is one. But I think the second thing that has also happened is for at least a person like me, it has given me a tremendous opportunity to introspect that what is really important to me in my life. You know, uh, uh, I, I mean, today, for example, we are doing uh, this interaction for Vishwarang, but in happier times, uh, I would have probably been coming to your city and I would have been sitting across, uh, you know, on a stage with you, with, uh, you know, 500 people in attendance. Uh, and there was a time when typically 10 days to 12 days of the month, this is what I used to do, which is travel from city to city in order to give lectures and talks and all of that. Uh, suddenly now I have the full 30 days when I'm not traveling. Uh, and uh, when you, you know, the most terrifying thing is actually when you have to live with yourself. Uh, uh, the, uh, to a very great extent, we as human beings are so used to our social life and our work life. And we are so busy in terms of our TV and our Netflix and our Amazon. We never have to worry about living with ourselves. And the first time that I had to live with myself was when I uh, went for uh, a 10 day Vipassana meditation course. And uh, magazine, newspaper, kitab, and then suddenly you realize that all you have is your own heart and your own head and your own imagination, and you are trying to sort of come to terms with that. Uh, I think this pandemic in a more diluted version uh, has been also uh, bringing us all down to earth. That tum kya cheez ho, tum sochte ho ki tum itni badi cheez ho, tum mahashai ho, tum great kya kya kar chuke ho, kitne matlab imarat bana chuke ho. But the, 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 you realize how humble you are, how utterly irrelevant you are. Uh, when you jo, go through jo, these times. Hindi mein jo akinchan uh, shabd hai wo bada aur aapne bahut uh, again uh, bahut interesting tarike se isko dekha hai ye bhi haan ek bahut lambi vipassana hai ek diluted Bilkul. form mein bilkul diluted form mein vipassana hai ye vipassana hai ye bilkul and and i believe that we will emerge better out of this there will be some people who will emerge better out of it 
and there will be some for whom it will simply be that they have gone back to normal the moment the world has bounced back so uh, you know i mean it's almost like a caged animal having been let free so they go back to their old ways but i think if we are truly intelligent and we are wise and we are mature then we will remember this time and we will uh, make sure that we take corrective decisions corrective actions so that we don't go back into that same rat race i remember when i had just started out by started out in my writing journey and i was not sure that whether i will be successful or not and uh, a dear friend of mine he told me he said ashwin remember one thing that even if you win the rat race you are still a rat so yes. uh, we have all been so busy winning the rat race that we have forgotten ki hamari aukat chuhe ki hi hai mm. uh, i i think to be able to evolve beyond that and realize that you don't want to be a rat anymore in your life i think that's very important yes that is really uh, true and uh, perhaps uh, uh, it this uh, pandemic would also you know motivate uh, to connect something more from the history into another possible entertaining story for all of us to read i know a lot of people have been writing to me saying that you should you should uh, create a story around this and so on and so forth but you know for for me what what actually happens i must tell you neel kamal ji is that uh, for me my stories typically uh, uh, i have an idea bank where i keep on making notes of ideas 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 so this has gone in as an idea into that bank okay. uh, but uh, uh, typically for for me any book which i write in the bharat series is normally about 2 years in the making if you really think about it maine 12 saal mein 6 kitabein likhi hain in the bharat series so an mm. average of 2 years has gone in that typically the first month or two is when i revisit my idea bank and i look at what were the stories that really held my interest and then i'm tossing around those ideas in my head in order to figure out which of those will keep me excited for the next 2 years once i'm done with that then i go into the next stage which is research uh, where i'll typically spend anywhere between 6 months to 9 months trying to figure out as to what are the elements from the world of history or mythology or theology or anthropology or science that i can bring into that story then i go into the process of actually plotting the story which can be 3 months then the process of writing the story which could be another 6 months to 8 months and finally the process of editing and rewriting the story uh so all of that takes me about roughly 2 years right now i don't have enough interesting material in my head to be able to actually tackle uh, a pandemic story it's too close to home for the moment because we are living through it maybe 5 yes. years from now or 7 years from now i may be may find that i have brought myself to being able to write about this and connect it with something far more interesting nahi to ek pathak ke taur pe ye hamare liye to bahut hi acha hai jaisa aapne apna process bataya aur main kyunki ek mahila aur grahini bhi hu to hum hamesha bolte hain instruct karte hain ki bhai dheemi aaj ka khana zyada swadishth hota hai to aapne 2 saal ka ek process bataya to 5 saal wala khana to bahut hi swadishth hoga ye main abhi se soch sakti hu Uh, एक uh, प्रश्न uh, बहुत बहुत मैं कहूंगी यंगस्टर्स ही ज्यादा पूछते हैं uh, मुझसे पूछते हैं आपसे भी पूछते होंगे दे कम अराउंड व्हेन व्हेन वी आर इन एनी सच सिचुएशन सो देन फाइन दे विल कम अराउंड कि वी आल्सो राइट वी आल्सो वुड लाइक टू राइट वी आल्सो वुड लाइक टू राइट एंड एट सम पॉइंट बी लाइक यू पीपल Young, young, younger generation is very transparent sure. and they are very clear and they verbalize very. Sure. But you know, you can see their parents standing behind them and you know, doing like this. <laughs> they don't, don't motivate them, don't push them, because they, they believe that the children should, uh, you know, pick up a profession as you had hinted earlier also. So what, what elements of uh, selling what you write and publishing what you write could you have do you have some advice for uh, the youngsters who actually want to write uh maybe what i can offer is 
and this is something which i ask uh, or rather which i tell anyone who says i have an inclination to write uh these are sort of five or six bulleted points that i would normally come up with uh the first bulleted point is this that don't think about writing but write uh you you don't need there are too many people who think oh i could do this but they don't so the first step is start writing it doesn't have to be lots it could be writing two paragraphs a day it could be writing a blog it could be maintaining a journal uh but start the process of writing because till the time that you don't do it i have always maintained that i am work in progress i'm never i will never be a a perfect product i will never have a perfect book all that i'm hoping for is a 2% or 5% improvement over my last book so when you start the process of writing then at least you are improving your style your content your thinking your structure all of that is getting improved by the process of writing i would say the second part of it is that uh don't lose the day job uh it's very difficult to write when you are hungry uh bhooke pet aap likh nahi sakte ho uh so and writing is something that you can do at any time when i was working a full full day job at that point of time i was still writing between 11 o'clock at night and 12:30 1 o'clock in the morning so do ghanta nikalna uh in the middle of your day is not something which is a tall order you can easily do it but keep your income flowing while you are trying to make it as a writer because it will be many many years before your royalties start kicking in so yes. that is my second piece of advice and the my royalty third... is also generally not i 7% 10% and the sale of books not everybody sells 1 lakh copies not everyone sells a lakh of co- in fact frankly uh, if you look at the worldwide ac nielsen uh, rankings you will find that actually more than 99% of books sell less than 2500 copies so it's only 1% of books which break beyond that 2500 barrier mark worldwide right. uh if you think of just the indian market there are 84000 books published every year in india which means in other words more than 200 titles come out every day so right. the chances of a success and a commercial success are rather rather low and how many books will eventually get picked up for movie adaptations or series adaptations very few so that's the reason i say keep the day job that is my second point of view the third is that there are too many people who seem to get influenced by what others think of their writing that that is going to come in your way at some point of time uh there will always be writers and there will always be critics i have always maintained that the relationship between the writer and the critic is like the relationship between the lamp post and the dog the critic has to do his job <laughs> and the writer has to do his job so stop worrying about what they think when i had written uh the rosabal line uh, uh the first reviewer for the rosabal line an international reviewer wrote that ashwin sanghi has written a good book but it could have been shorter maybe he should have considered stopping on page 10 uh <laughs> you, you, you know and had i really taken that advice seriously uh the the book wouldn't have got published in india eventually by tata westland and then eventually uh, when uh, when the hindu literary review picked up the book for review and i was so worried what were they going to say they wrote a half page review in order to say that we do a great disservice to ashwin sanghi by comparing him to dan brown because ashwin sanghi is so much more now which of those reviews should i take seriously should i take yes. the first review seriously or the second review so a, a review is simply a perspective it is a point of view uh and you simply need to compare yourself to yourself and work towards improving yourself so that is my third piece of advice my fourth piece of advice is that don't uh, don't think of yourself as a writer think of yourself as a storyteller when i'm writing my books i like to think you know it was uh, the great uh, 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 hollywood director alfred hitchcock who said that the length of a movie is related to the endurance of the human bladder which means in other words you can only sit for that much time in a movie before your bladder gives way absolutely uh, i like to think that main kamre mein baitha hu aur 10 log mere ird gird baithe hain and main unko kahani suna raha hu and 
there are at least three or four in that group who want to get up and take a bathroom break, but they don't get up because the story is so interesting. So once you start thinking of yourself as a storyteller, kahani kar, that is the moment where you suddenly will find that that the words will start flowing. Uh, fifth, do not think of yourself as purely a writer. There is this, there is almost this Brahmanical panditry associated with writing that because I have written now, it's the publisher's job to market me. No, you are the CEO of your book. Your work, real work starts after the book has been published because you need to plug it in everywhere. And I have always believed that the writers who sell more are the ones who are more besharam. They are not afraid about marketing their books. They are not afraid about going up there and saying, yaar, meri kitab kharid lo. So I think that is the fifth point I want to make. And the final point, in case you do become successful and in case you are able to attain some degree of success, then make sure that you keep your feet on the ground. Uh, it is far more difficult to deal with success than it is to deal with failure. Uh, remember one thing that every word that comes to you is not your own word. It is a word that has come to you from Ma Saraswati. Unki bhot badi den hai. And you are only a medium. So retain that humility. Keep your feet on the ground so that you can be successful with your next book. संवादों के बहुत सुंदर बात कही आपने आ, वैसे आ, जब लोगों को पता चला जो मेरे परिचित हैं मैं एक्चुअली क्योंकि मैं एक मेडिकल टीचर हूं तो यंगस्टर्स डू कम इन कांटेक्ट विद मी एंड सम ऑफ देम आर वेरी यू नो एविड रीडर्स एंड अवेयर सो वन क्वेश्चन व्हिच सम ऑफ देम आस्क्ड वाज दैट या वी हैव रीड मिस्टर सांगीज बुक्स and uh, of course we have enjoyed it that's why we have read it uh, and also we have seen and heard a little bit about him so we all the time only two two things get projected that he is a business uh, person and he is a writer so what does he do you know what third and fourth and fifth things he do or are his 24 hours choked up with business and writing so now do give me an do give an uh, answer to in you fact i must tell you mera jo business life hai i mean i i like to joke that hey, you know 12 years ago i was a i was a businessman who was trying to be a writer today i am a writer who is trying to be a businessman so matlab the roles have reversed in that sense okay so now i don't have a full time day job in terms of my business uh, i uh, i uh, go into to my family's place of work very very infrequently uh, my main profession is of course now writing uh, and uh, uh, the, uh, the one part of me is what i do as a writer and one part of me is what i do as an author as an author you also uh, uh, share ideas uh, and that is what i do through platforms like this when i'm talking to people like you or alternatively if i am going and delivering corporate lectures motivational lectures if i am uh, addressing students at colleges schools and universities so about roughly 10 days of my month are devoted to uh, to the lecture circuit about 20 days of the month are devoted to my my actual writing uh, nowadays a lot of my uh, books are also at various stages where we are attempting to find uh, how to make the transition from simply the written word to the performed word so uh, you know whether it's in terms of adaptations for uh, movies and web series and so on and so forth so i'm a little bit involved on that front also uh, i have my wife of 22 years and my son who is 16 years old so in that sense i'm also a family man uh, and uh, uh, frankly between what i do as a writer and what I do as a storyteller, and what I do as a speaker, and what I do as a family man, and what I do also in my world of business. That keeps me pretty occupied uh, for the 24 hours of my day. So uh, I'm quite happy the way it is. So I have, uh, I mean, if you ask me, do, do I have some other interests? Like, do I play golf? No, I don't. Uh, my, my interest is reading, writing, 
uh, and uh, uh, speaking. Excellent. So you are very precise and clear in what you like and uh, and what you and uh, you know you are not hankering after something which is not a, you are not able to fit into your twenty four hours. Absolutely. And your uh, family is also happy and comfortable about this. They are. Uh, so initially, when I write, do, they, do they, are... they want do they want to travel or maybe go out and. So that we we do that quite often actually because uh, as far as a writer is concerned he can write wherever he wants. So yes. uh, typically in about typically in a in a twelve month uh, uh, period we will end up traveling at least about forty days in a year, uh, oh. where where uh, you know uh, we go to different destinations. I mean right now for example in in the last uh, in the last year when I when the Vault of Vishnu came out. In January 2019, during the two years prior to that, I ended up making almost about two or three trips into China, uh, oh. on which one or two of those trips, my family was also with me, uh, because I was exploring what were the ancient connections between these two countries, and you know, writing about it. So I do a lot of footwork when I'm uh, when I'm developing my novels. Uh, when I wrote the Krishna Ki, I traveled to places like Mathura and Dwarka and. Uh, you know, Vrindavan and so on and so forth. So, Somnath uh, and many other places that I hadn't seen before. And in those, when I do those sort of trips, then I'm very happy to have my family tagging along because it 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 becomes very interesting for them also. And then, of course, there are many times when we just simply do a holiday to the hills where we have nothing to do. And then those eight or nine days, uh, I'm most most of the time doing my writing while you know my my wife and son are doing their own thing yes. uh, so i don't think the family as such has any problem with what i do as far as my parents are concerned and as far as the uh, my siblings are concerned i think they had their reservations during the early days about what what i was planning to do but after a while i mean i had grown up for most of the time with uh, having the the great uh, legacy of my father as a businessman who was relatively well known so uh, it it opened many doors for me as a businessman because i would say i'm so and so son but uh, then suddenly when i started writing people started approaching my father and saying how are you related to ashwin and that gave him a lot of excitement and a kick yes and i can so imagine the high ha so at that point i think he realized ki ha he is doing something worthwhile <laughs> so it's so true and another question uh, which uh, for you is posed by the younger lot again uh, they were asking that uh, we have read about uh, mr sanghi and he uh, like your grandfathers you know uh, making you available books and all so they the question actually is that he has uh, read through the lives of so many great people right from the ancient times to perhaps contemporary times and can he pick out uh, four or five of his uh, you know favorites or ideas whichever way you want to say uh, well, which I mean, we you, should you... delve deeper uh, because see i am the any any professional student has really doesn't doesn't have much time with him yeah. to you know to to pursue a, you know this kind of reading so yes. they thought that they'll get a few names from you whom they can pursue in a in depth whose thoughts ideas philosophies uh i i would say that uh, the the people that i have been inspired by are the people that i have actually ended up writing about so if you take for example a book like the krishna ki i would never have written it had i not been hugely inspired by the deity of lord krishna himself and particularly the 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 manner in which krishna conducted his life uh or for that matter i would say that uh, probably the central figure of kautilya is what caused me to write chanakya chant i would not have otherwise gone got about to writing chanakya chant and there are way there are times in which i wish that we had a modern day kautilya available to india uh, who could actually translate some of that ancient wisdom uh, into modern administration and politics because there are so many youngsters uh, who grow up thinking that oh when i ask them do you, have you heard about chanakya they say yes he is the indian machiavelli i say no listen please understand that machiavelli you could call him the european chanakya because machiavelli came many many year many centuries later uh, uh, and you cannot compare the depth and the scope 
of the Arthashastra with the prince. They are, they are two completely different works. The prince, is to, the prince is entirely about absolute power, where the Arthashastra uh, touches on administration and the ideal kingdom and the ideal state and the duties of a king. He even talks about how the 16 muharats of the day are to be planned for a king. He talks about how a treasury should be managed and at what frequency should soldiers be paid and what should be the slope of a chariot road? What should be the width of a road so that one chariot can overtake another chariot? Uh, I mean, the, the, the expanse of administration that is talked about in the Arthashastra. So one book that I would say that definitely every, uh, every Indian student at some point of time should read is probably the Arthashastra. And there are very good English translations. A very good English translation is available through the publishing house Penguin. It's uh, by Ranga Rajan. And uh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful book. It's a true eye opener. Uh, if you really think that these were, these were the, the visions and the thoughts that were going on uh, about someone living almost 18, uh, what, 2300 years ago, 3320 odd BC. Uh, 2,300 years ago, a person had that sort of a vision in terms of management, politics, and administration. It's almost like a McKinsey manual written in today's times, but 2,300 years ago. Okay, And that too, in uh, those uh, dynastic times, you know, the kingdom and all, not a democracy where, a uh, uh, you know, in those times and in those uh, thoughts, uh, Praja was... Uh, you know, Raja. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Chanakya says that he says that there is, there is no kingdom without a country and there are no, there is no country without its people. And so he says the king shall do pleases the people. So, you know, we, we, we associate Kautilya with Kutniti, but the truth of the matter is that there was a nobility to his purpose. So, uh, right. uh, even when there was Kutniti, even when there was Samdam Dand Bhed, it was all towards a nobler purpose. Uh, so, uh, you know, to a certain extent, the ends were always noble. And I think that is what comes out from the Arthashastra. So I would strongly recommend for those students of yours who have asked you, you should say that Ashwin Sanghi says that please read the Arthashastra. Even before them, I think I'm going uh, ahead and getting a few copies uh, uh, of it and reread it again. But uh, I, 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 if you have not yet read it, please do. I, I've it, read, it, uh, you know, the excerpts and, you know, articles, uh, but now uh, I'm going to but, do it, uh, you know, from page but, one but, to page But, but just, the, just the scale of the vision, the vision that, for example, how frequently sh should a soldier be paid so that on the one hand, he is motivated enough to fight, but at the same time has enough hunger in order to work a little harder. Mm. Now, this is what we nowadays call incentivization and management jargon. Right. So some of the, the, the very concepts that we now talk about in management theory are all there in the Arthashastra. Uh, uh, if, you, if you look at the concept of time management, uh, uh, Kautilya talks about the four, uh, the four quarters of the day. Uh, each one has, a, uh, they didn't have a 24 hour day. They had a 16. Uh, char prahar. Bilkul, char prahar. And he talks about every prahar and exactly what the king should be doing. When should he be taking reports from his spies? When should he be looking into the revenue and expenses of the kingdom? When should he be giving time for his own personal meditation and his own education? I mean, it is fascinating that what he, I mean, any king who was living in the times of Chanakya, and I'm assuming Chandragupta Maurya included, would have had to, uh, would have had to deal with a, with, with a very, very strict time schedule. Right. Uh, I think Siddharthji perhaps would have some questions of his own. Yes, so uh, fantastic uh, session uh, uh, going on already. And I think... Uh, we have touched upon so many, uh, you know, wonderful concepts uh, and uh, uh, points. And some of my takeaways till now uh, have been, you know, one very basic thing, which is 
the importance of instilling the habit of reading amongst uh, children and youngsters and also at the same time the importance of having mentors who can introduce uh, you know literature in a very systematic manner otherwise you are just you know picking up based on uh, 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 your own choice or maybe the look of the cover of the book but the systematic introduction of reading literature by a mentor is such a beautiful thought which has come out from this session the pattern of consumption of stories is changing so rapidly we couldn't agree more the entire festival this content is going online uh, uh, and a, a lot of it is going to stay like this in future as well uh, the literary curve of india following the world literary curve and how indian authors and literature are making a bigger mark now at a global scale uh, we also touched upon covid and the opportunity it provides to us for introspection very important in today's fast paced lives Uh, the intersection of philosophy history and mythology and some of the other uh, fields to weave out a beautiful story and finally the importance of staying grounded and humble is what uh, you know i have really taken uh, as my personal takeaways before we wrap up this uh, i would definitely like to you know ask as a lay reader uh, that uh, you know what are we looking forward to in terms of your uh, coming uh, works any particular book or project would you which you would like to you know announce or share more information uh, from the vishwarang stage to for our for the benefit of our uh, listeners uh, well uh, du during this period of time i have been during this lockdown time i have been working on several projects actually uh, uh, one of those projects is Uh, not a book but actually a web series uh, and so i've been developing an original web series uh, so it's the first time that i've actually been looking at writing a story but not for a novel but for for another medium uh, nice. in addition to that i've been also working on a uh, uh, on the next book in the bharat series which is book number 7 uh, so we've had six books till now the last uh the vault of vishnu was launched in january 2020 this year earlier this year uh so i'm hoping that that is a book where i'm now at the end of my research period probably uh i will start uh, developing the outline pretty soon i'm looking to bring that out by jan 2022 uh and uh, in addition to that i have also been working on a uh, on a rather interesting project where uh i am looking at uh, actually distilling some of the very interesting nuggets from world history uh into a non fiction title but right. that is going to be an ongoing exercise over the next probably 5 or 7 years uh before it can actually see the light of day but the work on that has started because i do believe that uh history is one of those subjects which unfortunately uh you know as they say um history is yesterday's politics uh you know and uh, so in that sense uh, history is one version of events uh and i believe to a very great extent in the words of uh, george santena who said history is a pack of lies about events that never happened written by people who <laughs> were never there so in that sense i want to uh try and set the record straight uh on many many historical obs observations of mine so uh that is work in progress and will continue to be work in progress for a pretty substantial period of time that's wonderful to hear and that's so exciting and uh, you know cannot uh, wait to lay uh, hands on some of those works and also we cannot wait for an indian uh, you know web series to take the netflix and the hot stars of the world by storm and uh, uh, you know we wish you all the success with that uh, initiative with that project and also uh, may you continue to write prolifically on indian mythology on indian subjects on indian history and continue to inspire uh, you know learners uh, readers uh, listeners uh, i'm sure a lot of audio books also uh, they are available now so not just in india but across the world so thank you so much sir for joining uh, today for this session at vishwarang thank you thank you siddharth ji it was a pleasure to be here uh, i wish i could have been there with you in person uh, it uh, because you know uh, uh, it, it 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 the the excitement uh, and the electrical charge of uh, yes. being in a room with uh, with a couple of hundred people 
is different. But uh, thank you for inviting me nonetheless. And thank you, Neil Kamalji, for being such a wonderful uh, moderator. Uh, I've really had a wonderful time today. So thank you very much. And wish uh, that Vishwarang uh, uh, goes from, uh, you know, transcends even greater heights uh, with every year that goes by. Thank you so much, sir. On thank that note, so I would like to assure that we would reach out to you for the offline or the physical version of Vishwarang, uh, most probably if all goes well by next year, so that we can host you in our lovely city of Bhopal. And on that note, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Neil Kamal Kapoor, for wonderfully steering today's discussion and getting the best out of uh, our esteemed speaker. So this is a wrap uh, for today's session, an interactive session, meet the author session with none other than Ashwin Sanghi. Uh, stay tuned with Vishwarang for more interesting and exciting sessions coming up on the Vishwarang YouTube channel live. Namaskar.